Hi, I'm Gemini, and I have two personalities, but we're in the semifinals now. Guess what personality the contenders get? Today on American Gladiators, let us take you back a few weeks ago. Kaz Worthington, the battle cat from Ameriknek, New York, watched helplessly. Only a victory by Tim Golders would put him into the semifinals. Today, Kaz goes head to head with Tim and tries to bite the hand that fed him. The battle cat has nine lives, and I'm back. I'm ready to rock. And I'm ready to roll. On the women's side, the honeymoon continues for Tampa's Denise Chase. Married when she arrived for the competition, she breezed into the semifinals. But Christy Kropp, the construction worker, wants to drill this bride home. Denise has looked very awesome, but don't underestimate the girl from Minneapolis. But not so fast. Christy and the other contenders first have to deal with a team of 10 made of iron and steel. Ladies and gentlemen, from Gladiator Arena in Los Angeles, California, here are your American Gladiators. Strap the Tower of Power. Play the n -n 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 Nitro. Score Thunder. Diamonds are forever. Laser. Ice. Jam, jam, jam. The Samuel Dolan Company presents the American Gladiator. Let the games begin. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with Larry Zonk, as our road to the Grand Championship continues here on the American Gladiators. Today's winner moves on to next week's first half final. And Larry, let's get right to it. Our men's competition, Tim Goldrick versus Kaz Worthington. And for Kaz, it's a chance to make good on that wild card spot. Well, Mikey's got new life. And as you can see, he's taking it seriously. He's tearing up the locker room, preparing himself. On the other hand, Tim Goldrick plans to take it one event at a time. The winner will go on to meet Mark Ortega in next week's first half finals. Tim and Kaz set to go. To get here, Tim beat Randy Jones in the second round. Kaz lost to Johnny Vineyard, but as we mentioned, Kaz made it as the wild card. We are ready now for our first event, Swing Shot. And they're cinching Tim up to his bungee. He comes to us from Canyon Country, California, 28 years old and owns his own construction company. Kaz Worthington, 26 years old, 165 pounds from Mamaroneck, New York, computer operator. Nitro, Thunder, and Tower, the three gladiators that the contenders will have to battle in midair. In this semifinal round, the contenders have 60 seconds to spring from their tower and then leap from the floor and grab either the yellow, blue, or red balls from that center cylinder. And there you see how the scoring goes. And then maybe the hardest part, they have to get back to the tower and deposit those balls in the scoring pods. Watch these fellas warm up. Tim, 6'2", has that long reach, but Ka seems right at home on that bungee court. He just sort of takes control. He's almost like an astronaut or a jet pilot. Again, the contenders have one minute to score as many times as they can. There are contenders and gladiators everywhere. Tim got a blue. Kaz a yellow. Kaz up there again and rips off another yellow one. Here comes Tim. Tried to get two that yeah. time, Larry. <laughs> he tried to palm the yellow and go for the blue. Tower had other ideas. Kaz has got three yellows, but he missed the scoring pot up on top of his platform. Tower, meantime. Oh, oh nice <laughs> catch by Kaz. A little loft act there. It was in his fingers, out of his fingers, and back in again. Now Tim <laughs> has got a blue one. <laughs> 17 seconds left to go. Those red balls worth five, blue three. They're just one blue and several reds left. I don't think they can get high enough. Five seconds. Kaz is running out of air. <laughs> and that is it, but a terrific, terrific game of swing shot. The final tally, Tim seven, Kaz five. Well, they call Kaz the battle cat. That implies that he never quits. Here he makes a great effort. Barely gets a hold of that blue ball, but more importantly, the second effort is what makes it count. Our semifinal round matchup about to begin. A look now at Denise Chase. She'll go against Christy Kropp. She's all harnessed up, and now she ascends the platform. 
to get set for her turn at swing shot coming off a great second round performance where she tallied a total of 37 points. A little background material on Denise Chase 25 years old 135 pounds Tampa Florida and she's a nail technician. Christy Krop on the other hand comes to us from Andover Minnesota 27 years old 148 pounds and is a construction worker and this is one tough gal. She likes the fight. And Larry, to get to the semifinal round, Denise Chase beat Erica Alstead in the second round. Christy Krop lost to Kimberly Lentz, but did advance as our wild card. And they will meet Kimberly Lentz, the winner of this semifinal round, next week in the first half finals. The three gladiators they have to face, Storm, Blaze, and Diamond. Just about set to go. Genders ready. Gladiators ready. Oh, look. Chrissy coming away with a blue ball. She literally had to take it off the pendulum and then tear it away from Diamond. Blaze defending against Christy, but she's got another one. Storm keeps Denise off the cylinder. 45 seconds remaining in this 60 second game. Denise kind of swinging free here. She had a little trouble getting back onto her tower. Here comes Christy. Here comes Storm. Storm Denise. blocks her hand. Each of those balls worth a different set of points. Yellow one, blue three, red five. Here comes <laughs> Storm having a double hit, but Christy gets away with a yellow ball. Christy getting a lot of nice hang time here as time expires. Oh. So a great way for Christy to get this semifinal round started, a 5-0 win over Denise Chase. Coming up next on the American Gladiators, well, Laser knows what to do. Pump up because Hang Tough is next. After one event, Tim Goldrick leads Kaz Worthington 7-5. They are now set to Hang Tough. This is where the contender has 60 seconds to make it across this grid of 55 rings. And Tim Goldrick is up first. He earned a draw the last time around in Hank Tough, and he'll have to do so this time against Tower. Tim came on in the preliminary rounds as a replacement for the injured Eric Monastory, and he hasn't looked back. Just being here is a dream come true for Tim, but his wife had a slightly different perspective. The wife said, Mike, that she thought he was crazy when he came home and told her that he was trying out for the Gladiators. So far, he's been doing a very good job, though. Again, we can't emphasize enough what kind of athlete Tower is. Here's a man that goes 275 and moves with the greatest of ease on those uh -oh. two rings. Uh-oh. Tim Get went him. outside and all of a sudden decided or found out that there was no rings out there. He'll run right into the tower here if he isn't careful. Discretion. <laughs> Retreat. 15 seconds to go. Got to move. Try it. Tower trying to move in for the kill. Tim is going to go the distance. He doesn't get the 10, but he does get five for the draw. And with that effort, Tim Goldrick expands his lead 12-5 over Kyle. Kaz Worthington up now and hang tough. He'll draw a tower. Kaz with a chance to take the lead over Tim Goldrick. A 10-point effort in this event will put him on top 15-12. Kaz is nicknamed the Battle Cat. His experience in karate, third degree black belt. Tower, get him. Says that his ability to focus has a lot to do with whether he wins or loses. I know he's focused on 10 points here, but Tower says, I'm focused on taking him off. In his two previous hang toughs, he's earned a draw and beat Turbo. Told me early on he was a little awed by the size of the Gladiators. And right here, he stands on his head trying to get away from Tower. Tower says, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a Bart Connor move. <laughs> a little trapeze deal here. I don't know who's going where. Kaz has turned inside out. 
That's gonna be hard on the shoulder joints. Kaz, I don't know if he's in pain or just running from the strain of having Tower on his back. He's been twisted like a pretzel in midair. 14 seconds to go on the clock. This is like the flying cross in gymnastics. What a gut check. Oh. Kaz Worthington's arms have to be four feet long now. Tower closes and Kaz is left with nowhere to go but up. Tower, I know this may sound ridiculous, but for a second there, you and Kaz look like Siamese twins attached at the hips. I don't know how Kaz hung on there with me on him, but let me tell you something, this boy's strong. And he maybe worked for it. Kaz, Kaz, what were you trying to do up there? You did a, you did a, a, a Mitch Gaylord, a Bart Connor, a Sukahara, you turned upside down. I thought your shoulders were gonna come out of oh. joints. I don't know, I didn't want to think about it because I don't think I can do it. So I forgot I couldn't do it, but this man is heavy and he's big. <laughs> I'm proud to be here with him. All right, guys. All right. Great stuff to watch. And if you like Tower or any of our other gladiators, you might want to join the American Gladiators Fan Club. Send $3 to this address. Our women's semifinal matchup continues with Hang Tough, Denise Chase up first. Looking for her first points of the competition. She was shut out in swing shot. She trails Christy Krop 5-0. She's going to be swinging against Zap. Denise Chase, recently married. You know, the one person who has been watching Denise who is absolutely dying with every move she makes, her husband, Ed. He's a candidate for a couple of antacid tablets right now. This is one of Denise's better events. She defeated Ice in the second round. Look at her move, so smooth. She's not employing any kind of strategy. She's just heading right straight down. And cuts over to the outside. She's gonna try for the outside corner of that platform. Sap desperately trying to cut her off. She's close, look out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this checkerboard's getting awfully small right here. So Denise backing off and trying another line. Zap almost had her there. Denise trying to fake Zap out a little bit. Zap doesn't go for it. Can she hang on for 12 seconds? Let's find out. Nine, eight, seven, six, Denise gritting five, her teeth. four, three, two, oh, two seconds left on the clock. Can Ed wins the None Too Happy Hubby Award? <laughs> two. Well, payback time here for Christy Kropp. She can increase her lead on Denise Chase. I say payback because in the second round in Hank Tough, she faced Zap and lost in 42 seconds. Christy Kropp, a Big Ten track and field All-American at the University of Wisconsin. This helmet's the toughest part of the job, trying to figure out which way to put it on. And Zap, those, those straps, especially tricky. And Christy set to go. You can wait, but you can't wait too long. You constantly have to keep moving. Referee gets after Zap. Zap waiting a little bit to see which way Christy was going, trying to get a little bit of an indication on where she should start. But Larry Thompson ushered her off the platform. Got to move now. Christy says, uh-huh. Starts yeah. smiling at Zap. You're going to do that, huh? Little Zonka theory there. She's heading back to the corner and saying, OK, Zap, come get me. Stay off if I stay back here, I know I can get five points. Got to move. Maybe wait for Zap to make a, a commitment. Gotta move! Oh, oh, Christy <laughs> slipped off the rings and she's down on the platform. Zap hardly broke a sweat as neither Christy nor Denise score any points in Hang Tough. There's a score after two events. Up next, atmosphere, and you can bet the Gladiators are ready. Gonna get them this time, another shutout. Wait for that switch. Switch. Hear me out, brother. Okay. Switch call. Okay, brother. All right, brother. All right, brother. Later, man. Another shutout. Zero, zero. You heard the strategy gotcha. discussed by Laser and Nitro. Those two gladiators are ready for Atmosphere. Atmosphere brought to you by PB Max, a real peanut butter snack.
Again, the contenders have 60 seconds to score as many times as they can in those four numbered scoring pods, each goal here in the semifinal round worth three points. Kaz Worthington trailing Tim Goldrick by seven, 12-5. This is Nitro, maybe I can get him back. <laughs> Tim talking about a little payback. I'll be back. So is Nitro, and you can bet our karate instructor has a clear sense of what his mission is. Larry? Kaz has got to come through. Battle Cat's got to show his colors here. He's got to come away with points. Remember, he's the wild card in the semifinals. He wants to make good on his second chance. Nitro rocks Tim Goldrick. Kaz on a breakaway. Goldrick with good moves, good control, but Nitro anticipating his every move. Laser like a shadow on Kaz Worthington. Now Tim with a breakaway. Oh, he missed the scoring. And he missed it in three as well. Again, there's a little black sensor in the middle of these scoring pods. You have to roll directly <laughs> over like Tim did right there. 13 seconds left. Well, now he's gonna come back to number four where he just missed. He picks it up this time, heads for pod one. Tim on a scoring roll. Kaz picks one up at the other end. Two, one, and... Goal for Kaz, two for Tim. Damn. And after three events, Tim Goldrick now leads 18-8. Blaze is getting set to go now in Atlasphere, and she's the subject of our Ask a Gladiator segment. Megan Walsh from Huntington Beach, California writes, Dear Blaze, how long do you work out every day? Hmm, Megan, that's interesting. I work out two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. For my morning workout, I normally do legs and arms. And then for the evening, I'll come back and do chest and some cardiovascular, such as the treadmill or the life cycle. I'll tell you what, Blaze, that would wear me out. If you'd like to ask one of our gladiators a question, write to this address, 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 967. All right, to the business at hand. Christy Kropp with a 5-0 lead over Denise Chase, and Larry's with her right now. Denise, you've got zero points, gals. Come a big surprise. I thought you'd score a few points by now. This, in the past, Atlasphere has been one of your better events. Uh, the pressure's on. How do you think you'll do? Yeah, well, so far it hasn't been my day, so hopefully after Atlasphere I'll make it my day. <laughs> Maybe it's her biorhythms because here's a woman who scored 37 points in her second round competition. One of the gladiators she'll have to deal with in addition to Blaze is Diamond. Ready. Gladiators, ready! Here they go. Again, every score Let's worth go. three points. Christie's got one off the bat, scoring pod number four. Gladiator's calling for a switch. They messed up a little bit. Christie's got another one in pod number three. Gladiator's playing at KG, just waiting for the contenders to make their move. Here's Christie on another breakaway. 30 seconds left. She's got to steer that Alice Spear just right. And she doesn't. She gets off to the left. Our cameraman almost got crunched down there. Here comes Christy again. Yeah, she's on target this time. And she makes a breakaway for number three. She's got that one, two, four goals. Remember the women's record set last week by Johnny Jonkowski with six. Diamond doing a good job of keeping Denise just caught up against the rail. There she's coming open, but too late. No, no here. Nice effort by Christy Kropp. Four goals worth 12 points. And he's still being held scoreless. This gal is going to have to regroup, plan a new strategy for the second half. And a victorious diamond heads back to the locker room. We're halfway through our competition. Three events to come, plus the all-important eliminator. Remember, today's winner goes on to next week's first half finals. In the women's competition, I know you're a little bit surprised about this. Christy Kropp leading Denise Chase, 17-zip. Denise. A total surprise, you know, the last time around her second competition, this was a this was a point scoring machine. Today she's just drawing the zeros. Hopefully she'll get her act together here at halftime and come out in the second half and show us some of that old flame. What about the men? 
Well, the men, Kaz is a little behind as we join him down in the contender's locker room. Kaz, let's go back to maybe your most exciting moment of the competition so far. I don't know if you've had a chance to see this, but this was the action in Hang Tough against Tower. What in the world were you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I can't answer you. I'm looking at my son. <laughs> Looks good though. The old spider, those years of watching Spider-Man helps out a lot. I'll tell you what, the degree of difficulty, outstanding there. <laughs> That's a heavy man. That's a heavy man. I was just trying to hold on for dear life, and each second is an eternity. So I'm just gritting my teeth and just holding on. Because so far you've survived and then some. You need to get back though a little closer to Tim Goldrick on the scoreboard, and I know you'll do that. Best of luck throughout the rest of this competition. Thanks a lot. So that's our story so far. We'll have a lot more coming up as the American Gladiators continues after this. Mike Adamley and Larry Zonka back with you. Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. Time now for Breakthrough and Conquer. Here, a contender can now earn five points in each of these segments. And Kaz Worthington is up first. The Battle Cat needs to get going. He trails 18-8. He'll take on Nitro in the conquering and in breakthrough. He's going up against Thunder. He likes Thunder as a gladiator, says he has a, a good attitude, kind of a nice guy. We'll see how nice guy, how much of a nice guy Thunder is right here. Kaz, 165 pounds, and Thunder did not go for that belt buckle fake and spin move and drove him out of bounds and down to the ground before Kaz could cross the goal line. So no points there. He's a third degree black belt. He's got good focus. He's got good strength, and he's almost. Nope, couldn't quite get Nitro. That's it, boys. That's it. Much the same as a boxer gets stuck in the corner and then swings his opponent around. That's exactly what Nitro did to Kaz there. So Kaz comes up scoreless. Once again, the king of the ring. So now it's Tim Goldrick's turn. Tim did not compete in this event in the preliminary rounds, oddly enough. Remember, he replaced Eric Monastori. This was the event where Eric got hurt and had to leave the competition. He got hurt in the conquer ring. Oh, <laughs> Tim put pretty a nice of... move. He needed about two more feet of sideline, I think, Larry. It's a, good, it's a good thing that our stage hands there had two feet of cushion because otherwise he had taken out a boom on one of the cameras. That's how hard Thunder pushed him. Tim with that six foot two inch frame, not able to get low on Nitro. Ties him up for a second, but runs out of the time. So no points there. And the Gladiators continue to romp in Breakthrough and Conquer. The women are next. Christy Crop up first. She has a 17 0 lead as we take a look at Storm and Ice. You know, the women have really taken to this event. It certainly fits Christy's personality. As a matter of fact, she's no stranger to doing things traditionally reserved for men. Christy Crop drives one mean jackhammer. The 27 year old Minnesotan is a study of grit and determination. She's confident that her work experience will pay heavy dividends in Gladiator Arena. My construction work, I believe, will help me out a great deal. Like I said, um, swinging in a sledgehammer will probably be helpful in the joust. And all the heavy lifting, and it's tough. You work construction for 12 hours a day. It's a lot of strength endurance, and I think that'll help me out. How meticulously did Christy prepare for a shot at the Grand Championship? Well, here she practices for the wall event on a homemade facsimile. My brother was a gladiator, and he'd chase us and pull us down, so it was good practice. A University of Wisconsin track and field All-American, a bodybuilder, a handball player, there's no doubt about it, this girl is all jock. If I were a guy, I would be a football player. I'd be a linebacker. I love it. Maybe next year, Christy, because right now you have to play running back. Storm gets to be the linebacker, and then the conquering ice will hold court. Christy pointing at Storm and smiling, Storm winking, saying, come on. And here she comes. Oh! She fumbled it away. Yeah, if you hold the ball, you score. Step in, now you've got to control the ball in football when you break the plane. Question here is, can Christy get low enough to pull ice out? She's going for the leg. Three seconds left on the clock. 
and Christy Kraut <laughs> comes up empty. Comes out of the, out of the conquer circle, but without gold. Well, now's the oh. perfect time for Denise Chase to uh, make her mark. She has been stuck in idle throughout this competition. No points in swing shot, hang tough, or atmosphere. Ready! So far, our gladiators have manhandled all of the contenders. <laughs> it looks like Storm is going to do the same thing. He just picked up Denise and laid her down. Stay up, guys. Stay up. Do not go to the mat. Ready? How often have we seen Storm? God, she's been good in everything. Again, Denise has 10 seconds, now five, to get any part of Ice's body outside that conquer ring. Ice very good at keeping her balance, using that upper body strength. She wins again. And what has happened to Denise? Maybe she walked under a ladder or stepped on a crack in the sidewalk. Well, anyway, she'll get another chance in assault. That's next. Christy Krop leads Denise Chase 17-0 after four events. Larry and I still trying to figure out what has happened to Denise as she gets set for assault. Ice will man the tennis cannon for the Gladiators. This is the game where a contender can earn one point for every weapon they successfully fire or 10 points for hitting that target located above the Gladiator. And Denise Chase has really been snake bit. Four events so far and no points to show for it. <laughs> That's funny you say that, Mike. I talked to her before the preliminaries began. She said it's the greatest fear is to be snake bit. All those zeros. She told me before this event that she felt like uh, she only get just one point for just showing up today. Well, there's her first point right there, successfully firing that weapon. So she's off to Schneid. <laughs> well, she comes up with a bazooka. Yeah, has ice ducking a little bit. Got her, yeah. got her, yeah. right hip shot. Yes! And she does pick up two points and is finally on the scoreboard. Denise making that fatal mistake, looking where she's going instead at that cannon, and Ice slips in a rump shot. <laughs> well, Christy Kropp in a perfect position to give herself a, a lot more breathing room than she already has. She picks up more points here. She'll widen that lead over Denise that right now stands at 17-2. She also will be drawing fire from ice. Mike, you've talked with Christy. You know what kind of head case she is. And he used that term in regards to sporting events. She's always worried, no matter how big her lead is, she's always worried it's not enough. She's a great competitor. Oh, real close with a crossbow. Forty seconds left. Way low with the bazooka. On her way to the cannon. Doing a little two-step. Ice is laying the shots right at her feet. And before she could get the shot off at safe zone number three, it appears that she was winged. Did you feel it? I mean, I don't know, but he said it got you on the shoulder. I don't know if it Clean. glanced off. No, it. no glance. And that I know. Yes. If it hits you, it hits you. The definitive ruling from Larry Thompson, two points for Christy Kropp. Now it's time for the men and laser atop the platform for the Gladiators. Tim Goldrick focusing in on the task at hand. He leads Kaz Worthington 18-8. Coming into this event, Assault. This is another event that will be new to Tim. Again, he was a, uh, an alternate for Eric Montessori, who was injured in the prelims. Eric competed in that event and was hurt afterwards. Old Tim's pretty gamey. He's looking forward to this. Cut in the points. He told me before, Mike, that he plans to retire by the time he's 40 years old. Laser trying to retire him right now. Ooh, just underneath the target. <laughs> That'll shake him up. Look at Laser now. He's trying to get out as many shots as he can. Trying to get 
step back where he can get visual contact with Laser. Good idea. Whoa, just barely misses. 15 seconds. Uh-oh. Laser putting him right down the pipe. Oh, good job. Moving from safe zone to safe zone. Needs to get this last shot on. Yes. Gets it. He yes. gets it. Yes. Ten points. Let's see what happens. Well, Mike, the controversy is, did it hit Tim directly or did it skip off of something? And frankly, from this angle, There's we can't a skip, tell. A skip here. Rules that a skip there. The rules that a skip off the, off the set. Larry Thompson conferring with his spotters. It is indeed a skip, a hit for Tim Goldberg. He picks up 10 points and now leads 28-8. Laser can't believe it. So it's up to Kaz Worthington now to pull a rabbit out of his hat. After that last second hit by Tim Goldrick had earned him 10 points, Tim now with a 28-8 lead. Imperative here for Kaz to get the full 10. Kaz with decent speed, turned a 4-8, 40-yard dash, preliminary times. He's gonna need every bit of that today. Lasers on the mark. Cat on his toes and down on his hands. 45 seconds left. Guys, oh, yeah. some, some high leg dancing on his way to the cannon. Oh, almost. This is as far as Kaz has gotten in assault. Shot with the air gun. Oh! Goes oh, a flip. <laughs> Laser on the mark. It looks spectacular, but it wasn't very effective. Exposed all of his body. But Kaz does pick up five points. And if you flip for that performance, wait till you see what's up next. It's Powerball. Stay with us. Welcome back, Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. Time now for Powerball. The women are up first. Christy Kropp enjoying a 19-2 lead over Denise Chase. And in the semifinal round, the scoring has been revamped. Contenders can now pick up three points for scoring in the outer cylinders, five for scoring in the center cylinder. Christy Kropp set the record in the second round with 25 points. Look at her go again, past ice. They're also dealing with Zapp and Blaze as well. Puts another one in on Blaze. 400 meter champion in the Big Ten in her track and field days at Wisconsin. She's got three already. Another move oh. past plays. That one rolls out of the cylinder. Goals and he scored finally. Christy Kropp going for the middle. Zap got there too late. That's worth five. Christy with an open shot. She should have taken that middle cylinder. Got 17 go points already. She's going for the jump shot. The <laughs> They're out of air. They're out of time. But a great effort again in Powerball by Christy Krupp. As once again she piles up the points. Denise's husband Ed telling her to stay cool. Don't worry, we've got the eliminator. But cool will not be the operative word here as Tim Goldrick and Kaz Worthington set to go in Powerball. And Kaz really needs to come through here. And as we look at Thunder, he's the subject of today's Gladiator moment. One of the most memorable moments for me on the American Gladiators was again my first season on the show. It was against uh, Craig Branham, who turned out to be the grand champion that year. Uh, I remember meeting Craig at one of the buckets and going head on, knocking him over it. So I remember that as being one of the hardest hits I had that season. And I think Craig probably remembers it too. Thunder Craig does remember, and Kaz Worthington would like a Branham-type performance without sustaining the same kind of punishment. Powerball brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Now you're playing with power, Super Power. We have an interesting situation. Yay! Tim's very aware of the pressure on Kaz, and as a result, he's going to turn it on himself. His whole cheering section's here, hollering gold, his nickname. Goldie, Goldie. 
Goldie looks a little moldy right now. Kes Kaz scores. <laughs> oh, he tries a diving leap. Kaz has got another one. This is going to help his chances. Oh, look at that. The middle one. That's worth five points. It's Tim Beautiful. Finley scored. Beautiful a great move. move by Kaz. Yeah, faked outside, went underneath, went in between the Gladiators, split him, and picked up that five points. Stay down. Stay Ten down. seconds to go. Thunder trying to keep his head on a swivel. He's got contenders at each end. He wants to protect that center pod. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's the way it stands. Kaz needed to come through. He did 11 points for Kaz, three for Tim Goldrick. The result, Tim now leads only 31-24. That means that Kaz only has to overcome a 3.5 second head start in the Eliminator. Now that's to come. We'll have it all as American Gladiators continues after this. Don't forget. Welcome back to our final event of the semi-final matchup, the Eliminator, and the women will lead things off. Christy Kropp at the moment enjoys a 31-point lead, good for a whopping 15 and a half second head start on Denise Chase. But keep this in mind, Denise turned in one of the better eliminator times among the women, and she is counting on that factor to help pull her through here. She's with Larry right now at the start line. Larry? Denise, 15 and a half seconds must seem like an eternity down here at the starting line, but strange things have happened before in this eliminator. Yeah, I've dug quite a hole for myself, but actually I feel like I have more energy now than I did earlier today, so I'll see if I can put it to use. Buckle up and let's have at it, kid. Okay. All right. Thanks. Denise's quest to make it to next week's first half finals might be termed mission impossible, but as you mentioned, Larry, it can be done. One of the pitfalls the contenders face, if they fall off the hand bike, a 10-second penalty, and their storm and blaze to make sure the contender stays down there. On the tower, diamond and ice, they'll have one last shot at the contenders hurling those giant-sized medicine balls. Mike, we talked about Christy earlier. No lead is sufficient. Just for the record, Denise's best eliminator time, 108. Christy Krops, best eliminator time, 125. Very conceivable that Denise could do well here and go on to win. So far, Christy Crop mistake free. Struggling a bit on the hand bike. Denise Chase chomping at the bit. Well, Mike Christy wasted some valuable time on that hand bike. She makes the platform over the rolling logs. Up she goes up the cargo net. So far, she's been mistake free. That's exactly what Denise Chase needs to see happen if she's going to catch up. Then it checks her eyes. Christy grabs the line and off she goes. Former All-American in track and field, University of Wisconsin. Has looked terrific throughout this semifinal. Sometimes she's a worry wart, Larry, but today she didn't worry and she crossed the finish line. She's moving on to the finals. And she'll meet Kimberly Lentz next week. Christy, I know you've been highly emotional all day long. You've been pushing yourself, never, never enough. You always want more and more. It's tough, though. <laughs> it really is. I just did my best, and things came out in my favor. Well, your best is good enough. Welcome to the Thank first you. half finals, my friend. Thank you. And Christy will face Kimberly Lance, the woman she's hugging right now, and that'll be a rematch because Kimberly beat Christy in the second round. And for Ed and Denise Chase, well, the honeymoon's over, but Denise did have a great run here in California. The winner's set to go now in the Eliminator, and Kaz Worthington really helped his cause with those 11 points in Powerball. As a result, he faces only a three and a half second handicap against Tim Goldrick, so the outcome of this semifinal matchup very much up in the air. And right now, Larry Zonkas with the Battle Cat at the start line. Larry? Kaz, as you demonstrated in Powerball, you like to control your future. You're back in this thing. Handicap of three and a half seconds, but you've been here before. You know anything can happen in this eliminator. 
That's right. I don't count on any lucky breaks. My focus is here, and my focus is that there's no tomorrow. It's like getting to a fight in karate or in street or anything. There's no tomorrow. You have to carry me out of here before, I'm, before I quit. All right, we'll be waiting for you. Good luck. Tim Goldrick leads 31-24. That seven-second deficit means that Tim will get a three-and-a-half-second head start according to our eliminator scoring formula. Thunder and Laser awaiting below the hand bikes. Should anybody fall there, contender penalized seven seconds on the tower throwing those giant-sized medicine balls, Gemini and Nitro. Tim's best eliminator time, one minute and one second. Paz's best eliminator time, 54. Mark Ortega, who won last week. The winner here will meet him. Tim Goldrick across the hand bike, but here comes Kaz. Tim Goldrick goes down, rolls up, and he's on the cargo net. Kaz right there with a huge leap. <laughs> oh, this is a race. Tim Goldrick said, might as well have it close. I like it that way. And Kaz is obliging him. Oh, this is going to be great, Larry. Here comes Tim Goldrick, wasting no time getting on the zip line. Here comes the battle cat, Kaz Worthington. Who gets over these walls quicker will decide who's going out to the first half final. And don't forget those gladiators. They're next to each other. This is great. Photo finish. Oh, oh, Photo finish. Second. How could it have been any closer? Who touches out first? Tim. Tough to rain on this parade. Great race. You said at the beginning you wanted it close. You liked it that way. How was that for close? I had three and a half seconds. I needed three. That was close. That was great. Yeah. Oh. Well, I know you're excited. Welcome to the first half finals, my yeah! friend. You met it. <laughs> yeah. There you are, Mike. So an American gladiator salute to Tim Goldrick, who gets a warm embrace from his wife. And the finish, well, it's one we won't soon forget. Tim stretching for victory, and Kaz Worthington with a desperation leap that typified his gut, spirit, and determination. We're all going to miss the Battle Cat. Tim goes on to face Mark Ortega in next week's first half finals. We'll have all the action for you next week on the American Gladiators. If you like the excitement of American Gladiators on TV, you'll love the action on the American Gladiators Live Tour. Gemini, Ice, Nitro, and Zap, and all your favorite Gladiators are coming to your town to challenge your area's best athletes in Powerball, Assault, Hang Tough, Joust, The Wall, Atlasphere, and The Eliminator. Suit up and get ready for some spectacular competition. The American Gladiators Live Tour is coming soon to an arena near you.